So to help us demonstrate the bake feature, let's go over to our clip art tab and bring in some clip art. So we've got a cantering Arabian. I'm going to double click on that to bring that into position. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nudge it over to the right hand side and I'm going to hold down control whilst selecting the horse component with the left mouse key of my mouse and I'm going to drag that across and because I've got control held down it's actually creating a copy for me. Okay so we've got two horses here I might just shrink this one down ever so slightly. Okay so something like that. Now the effect I'm going for is I would like this horse to look as though it's at the forefront and this horse to look as though it's in the background. So we need to adjust the heights and we can do that either by adjusting the overall shape heights, adding base heights, tilts and fades. There's lots of powerful options that we can use in order for us to create the effects that we want. So to start with, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this horse here and I feel like because we're happy with the overall height on the kind of right hand side portion of the horse, all I want to do is lift up the left hand side of the horse. So essentially I want to tilt it from the right to the left. And we've got the tools to do that. So whilst we've got that selected, you'll see we've got these buttons here. And if I click on that, that's going to open up the properties form. And we can look at applying a tilt. Now a tilt is essentially an angled base height that we can apply to our horse, whereby we define the direction of the tilt based on an original pivot point where we start that. So to apply it, we simply check the tilt box, use the set option, and then when I move my cursor into the 3D view, you'll see I have an anchor with the number one next to it. This is where I need to specify my first point, in which case I want to tilt from the right to the left. So I'm going to click on the right hand side of the horse. You'll see now I've got a number two. And as I move my cursor, you'll see we've got this red line. Now this is just telling us the direction in which we will be dropping our tilt. Okay, so I'm going to do that essentially from right to left in a horizontal fashion. And then when I'm happy, I just click to accept that. Now, you can't see anything has changed here, and that's because by default, it starts at zero degrees. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at increasing this. So we can do that, and you can see uh, that that's working. That's perfect. You can see here that that horse now clearly looks like it's in front of the horse behind. However, if we just tilt our view, you can see we have now introduced a vast amount of vertical height here, which isn't ideal and it's not going to look very pretty. So what we can do is we can look at applying a combination of tilts and fades between both of the components to ensure that we maintain the most minimum relief that we can so we're not left with horrible vertical walls like we have here. And by applying tilts and fades to both of the components, we can try and find a middle ground where we can really reduce the overall vertical height. So let's just take this horse here. And we're just going to go in. You can see we've got that angle set to 6.4. So let's just reduce that down. So ideally, we want to keep it somewhere around 1 or 0.8. OK, so 1 is OK there. But obviously when we're at one, we can see that uh, the horses just look, uh, look like they're blending into each other. So what we can do is we could look at applying a fade to this horse where we fade from the left to the right. Okay, So it's very similar to the tilt except we're not adding or subtracting a base height here. What we're actually doing is we're actually fading the overall height of the component down. Okay, So... At the moment, we can see it's at uh, its full height. And then if we apply a fade, we can use the checkbox, use the set option here. This time we want to fade somewhere around here, going up in this direction, because that's the majority of where we want this to fade out. Anywhere you can see green is where that component is hiding underneath the other component. Okay, so we're going to go from here. So that's my first point. Then we're going to go up somewhere in this direction. Click to accept that and you'll see it's automatically changed ever so slightly. And the reason for that is, is that the software automatically applies a 50% fade. So what has happened is we're at full 
component height here but as we travel in this direction this especially this area here the tail of the horse in the background is now 50% the height of what it was originally and we can continue to tweak with that by using the slider like so okay so you can see the more we fade the more we actually lose sort of detail in our component as well and so you can see that it's gone extremely flat in these areas and it will have an effect on the overall areas at the top over here as well however now we've kind of got to a position where we can clearly see that this horse is in front of the horse behind and if you are happy with that that's fine you can go ahead however what i want to do is i want to look at adding a bit more height to our horse and then applying an additional fade okay now i can't fade anymore because we're already at 100 percent we've maxed out our fade capacity but what i can do is i can bake this component and essentially say to the software i'm happy with this as it is can we now bake it and then it will change the component so that it has no fades and the component is as we see it okay so the way i can fade it is by right clicking on the component and going to component and using bake alternatively i could go to my component tree right click go to bake or i could go up to my levels here right click on that component press bake it seems a lot easier just working directly from the 3d view so we're going to go to component we're going to bake that okay so you'll see now in our component tree we've got the word baked next to it that's an indicator for us so that we know it's now baked whatever properties it had on it before have now gone and it's now a brand new component that's essentially locked in all of the uh, fade that we applied earlier which now enables us to create more fades and more changes to this component so the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to increase the shape height of this just to bring a bit more oomph into our horse. Okay, so you can see we're just bringing that right back up. And obviously because we've brought that back up, now looks like the legs are actually blending in to the horse on the front. And this is where we can look at applying a fade again now that we've baked this. So we could use the fade option, use the set option here, and then we could go from the left to the right over here and you'll see it's just reduced that down ever so slightly but we still have a bulk of weight in there from the horse when we look at that from the top view you can clearly see that the right hand horse is in front of the horse that we've got in the background on the left here so now we're going to look at some additional functionality of the bake feature that can be accessed in aspire so i'm going to go to file save as and in here we're going to just call this bake and then we're going to jump over to our file in aspire okay so now we're in aspire it's the exact same file here now in aspire you also have access to the bake option using its dedicated icon over in the modeling tools which is this one over here now when we've got more than one component you can actually bake the two together now, i'm actually going to take both of these and i'm just going to move them down let's just take them select them move them down like so and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and bake them okay and what will happen now if i go into my component tree you'll see we've just got one component there now if we go ahead and undo that by using the Control z you'll see now we've got access to our two components like so now if i wanted to retain both of these components on an individual basis but still i want to create a baked version i can do that really easy i simply take one horse shift and take the other and then if I hold down control, that's going to create me a copy and then click on the bake option. What the software will do is it will create me an extra copy if I move that up here, which is my baked version. So if you go up here, we can see that's baked You can see that it's baked because it's all highlighted red. 
and if I go back over here you can see I've got access to my individual components and so that's one of the benefits with Aspire is that you can actually bake multiple components together to create brand new components and so that's how you use the bake tool in vCarve and Aspire thank you for watching